everybody welcome back to another video so today i'm going to do a fall themed meal prep and as you might be able to see behind me here i have a lot of things that i need to do today and my shirt is vibes for the day so i'm gonna try to do this over the course of the weekend so within a 48 hour period i have like six to ten things that i want to get done and i'll show you here right now so one of the easier things I want to do is make some pumpkin muffins. And if you don't already know about this recipe, I'll talk about it when I do it. But this is one of the best, easiest things you can do. I'm also going to make some granola. Um, this has been out for falafel. I have um, mushroom risotto that I'm going to plan to make. And then this is my list of ingredients that's very large for making a turkey. The turkey is going to be used obviously for meals, potentially deli turkey or whatever for sandwiches this week, but I'm also kind of prepping for Thanksgiving that's gonna be in another month and a half. If it's a good enough recipe, then that's something that I can bring to my non-veg family. And then here we have some clearanced apples that I plan to use both in apple chips. So I'm gonna use them in my dehydrator and I'm also gonna potentially use them and some hot apple cider for the crock pot too. I do also have a chili crock pot recipe that I want to use and then I also have some bananas that might need to be used up so I might make some banana style bread as well. Um, there are plenty and plenty of vegetables and fruits that I have that are not necessarily about to go bad but th just that I want to prep so I'll be doing a lot of cutting and freezing of those as well and anything else that I do this weekend, I will definitely include you in on. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so all you need for this recipe is a can of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie mix, and then just a bag of dairy-free or vegan um, cake mix. And most cake mixes are vegan, but you'll just wanna check the box. Then at this point, you'll just put them in the oven at the recommended cupcake time. I put a few chocolate chips on top and I use chocolate cake mix, but you can use whatever flavor you choose. Now you see here that I'm starting in on my granola mix. I like this recipe because it's kind of, you can just throw in whatever you choose and whatever flavors you're feeling. Or if you have some things you need to use up, you can put those in too. Every recipe that I use in this video, I will link down below, so don't worry about that. I chose this one specifically because it said chunky on it, and I like the big chunks. I don't like little crumbles, so this actually turned out really well. You just have to press it down on the pan before you put it in, and then cool it off well on the sheet, and you're good to go. Okay, so those are two nice, quick recipes to start off my day. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and get my food processor out and do all the things that require the food processor. One thing that I didn't mention I was going to do at the start of this video is make my own parmesan, cashew parmesan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because the other things that use the food processor are wet and the parmesan is dry. So I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to get to the turkey. These turn out so moist and yummy every time I make them. If you haven't had them before, it's definitely worth a try. If I'm being honest, this is the first time that I made this turkey and I'm really pleased with how it turned out even though I didn't have very high expectations for it. It had quite a few ingredients but the process of putting it together as well as baking it was pretty simplistic so i definitely suggest this recipe to anyone who wants to try a mock meat but is a little bit scared too as you can see here i'm finally molding the dough together and prepping it for baking time it does say to let it rest and to not eat it until the next day so you will see that then you might notice my frozen cilantro and parsley from the last video that I put it together. This falafel recipe is great for a really quick night. We usually make a batch and then throw it in the freezer so that it is ready whenever we are up for a wrap. Pro tip, when you are having a really long day of using the oven, try to do your best to match up the oven times and temperatures 
when I was making the muffins, then I had the granola waiting, and then I was able to put the turkey right in. So it worked out perfectly. Now for being such a simple recipe, this mushroom risotto, if you like mushrooms, I know there's mushroom haters out there, but if you like mushrooms, this is a really great, simple, pretty quick recipe to put together. And it has less than 10 ingredients that are involved in the entire recipe. One thing I will know about this recipe is that it is in grams, so you're gonna have to convert it. But also, I did double this recipe, and there was only about three to four bowls that came out of it. So just keep that in mind when you are making this, depending on how big your family is or how many you're cooking for. I recruited some assistants to help mold the falafel. As you can see, it makes quite a few, this batch does. You do have to maybe use a little bit more liquid than the recipe requires, which is what I had to do, but it's still really a good recipe. I don't know what it is about this recipe, but it almost has the perfect like umami flavor, and it's great for a cold night. Special test taster. Test, taste tester. Take one. Okay, break off a chunk. Already broken. Yeah, it's good. What do you like about it? Is that peach? It's like peachy. No, there's like, no peach in it. No peach? Huh. What we got in here, bud? Got uh, some raisins. Nope. No? The no, almonds. You got almonds. Mm hmm Some chocolate. Yeah. Um well, this is in peach. I don't know what you're pointing These at. These flakes. It's not flakes of peach. That's what we call coconut. Huh. Oh I taste the coconut now. <laughs> oh my God. I thought it was slices of peaches. Huh. And that's it, right? So we got Peaches. Granola. Almonds. Chocolate. Granola. This—that's what this is. <laughs> yeah, we got this um, not like oats. an ingredient. We got oats. Yeah, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. When I say oats. like peaches, I mean coconut, and when I say granola, I mean oats. You know what I mean? Mm. Um. Yeah, it's good. Banana. Yeah, it's good. Are you gonna cut this in bars or something, or are you just gonna? No, it's supposed just to be like break it off and shovel chunkies. it. Chunky boys. Yeah, break it off and shovel it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I'll put it in a Rate bag. Rate it out of 10. Let's, let's do that. As far as granola goes, I'd say a 10. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good granola snack, you know? Cool. Maybe more chocolate, just because I like chocolate, but... Okay, thanks for your review. Yeah. All right, bye. Okay, so it's been a long day. I'm going to actually finish up the day with some apple chips. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these up slice them up and then put them in the dehydrator because it takes about 16 hours for it to get all the way through to completion and then I will finish up tomorrow. So I'll see you in a couple seconds for you and tomorrow for me. Dehydrating fruit is a great way to make sure that you don't have any food that goes to waste. I also usually put in some pear chips as well. I make banana chips in here and I play around with it with other vegetables and fruits as well, but it's just a great snack and something that you can crunch on if you're trying to eat a little bit healthier too. Next morning, they're almost done. I'm eagerly anticipating the beaver to go off. You are wondering how chunky my granola actually turned out, right? Now, like I previously mentioned, um, the recipe for this turkey required it to sit overnight. So now I am cutting into the fresh turkey. I probably should have forked the top because I got a little bit of an air bubble, but that part is mostly aesthetics.
I don't know if I've been vegan too long or what, but the texture on this turkey was pretty spot on. I would not change anything about this recipe. <laughs> oh my god. I hope I can put that on live TV. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, it's good. Tell, um, tell me about it. Is it flavorful or bland? I'm working on it. I mean, it's <clears throat> dry like turkey. So, <laughs> so there's that. Not really what I was going for, but. Um, it's not bland, it's got flavor. Would you replace this with the regular deli turkey that we buy at the store? For sure. Um, yeah, I don't want to say it's like it's like a smoked turkey, but kind of like a smoked turkey. The flavoring is it. Mm, just like rosemary and seasonal. Yeah, rosemary. Seasonal for sure. Seasonal for sure. It's got some flavor. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh. Okay, it is day two. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish up this meal prep. Um, today on my list is to do some apple cider. I have two crock pots going, so that's just gonna be a half batch. And then the other crock pot, I'm actually gonna do some chili, some quinoa chili for tonight's dinner. And then I'm also gonna potentially make some baby banana breads. And with the leftover apples that I don't use in the cider, I'm gonna slice them up and make some more apple chips. If I'm really ambitious, I might get to making some quiche for tomorrow's breakfast and to eat the rest of the week. And then my last thing is just to prep a bunch of the vegetables and the fruits that I have out. Um, I won't show you too much of that because it's all it is. I'm cutting them up and putting them in the freezer, but hopefully I can get to everything. <laughs> Now, once again, all the recipes will be listed below or linked below. I do need to say that this recipe actually was not a crock pot recipe. It's supposed to be cooked on the stove, but I'm lazy or what I like to call efficient. So I decided to just throw it all in the crock pot. I put it on high for probably about four hours or you can put it on low for about five hours but I just put all of the ingredients in and it turns out perfectly every time. So instead of slaving over the stove, I just throw it all in the crock pot. For this recipe specifically, I made 1.5 times the recipe and it filled it all the way to the tippy tippy top of the crock pot. So just keep note, if you're gonna try to double it, it won't all fit. So one times the recipe is perfectly fine. It is the perfect amount for a crock pot. I will do my best to mention any modifications that I make to any of the recipes that I'll link down below, but if you see one that I didn't mention, feel free to leave a comment. This apple cider is another easy recipe to make sure that you're not creating any food waste. the definition of filled to the brim. This is just two of many bags of peppers that we cut and froze. Some are diced and some are fajita style. Now you got cider and applesauce. So it's actually day three, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I figured it was the same time that you'll get it. So really should I stress myself out and make it all done in two days? I don't really care, so here I am. I'm gonna finish up these banana bread muffins. Well, they're like mini banana breads. And then I'm also gonna make up the quiche tonight so that I can bake it tomorrow morning for breakfast. So I kind of failed big time on this one. I forgot to record myself making the actual quiche filling, uh, but the next morning I grilled some vegetables and now you see here I am just mixing them in with the quiche filling I made the night before. 
Again, I will link the recipe down below. This actually turned out really great. I hadn't made this recipe before yet. Um, the only thing is, is that the texture wasn't quite as firm as what you would expect a regular quiche, but the flavor was really good. I added a little bit more onion powder and I think garlic powder to the mix and maybe just a, a all over seasoning, uh, but it did turn out really great and I would definitely make it again. I definitely need to start saving a banana bread recipe when I find a good one because every time I think I saved one, I definitely didn't. But I always look up just a regular easy banana bread recipe and just veganize it. I use a flax egg instead of a regular egg and that's pretty much all you have to swap out. I really wanted to make use of this mini loaf pan that I got from a friend, so I made this batch of banana bread. I put a few chocolate chips in. I can never decide between chocolate chips or blueberries, but chocolate chips won over this time. So one batch made just enough for eight of these little loaves. And finally, this is what the quiche looks like when it comes out of the oven. I obviously doubled the recipe here because my husband is a bottomless pit and it lasted all week. That is all I have for you today. I'm going to go enjoy the fruits of my labor. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.